Welcome to Color Me Green, a podcast focused on making the world a greener place. Welcome to the first official episode of 2023. I hope everyone had a great new year. Um, how did I celebrate? Um, I think I watched Shameless, or was I watching Dead to Me? I think I was watching Dead to Me until like 10 o'clock, 10.30, and then I went to bed, or at least tried to. I'm a very light sleeper and the fireworks kind of kept me awake, but yeah, nothing too exciting happened over here. But exciting things are coming for Color Me Green. I have some plans for the show for this year. Some of those including giveaways, some fun new episode topics, interviews, and merch. I have had this really fun idea on how to incorporate merch without breaking any of our sustainability rules, so as soon as I get some ideas drawn up, I'll get to working on some fun stuff to put out for you guys. So get excited, because 2023 is going to be a great year. So for today's episode, I thought I'd do a part two to a past episode. Episode 22, Careers and Sustainability, has done fairly well being one of the top downloaded episodes. And when I did that one, I knew I wanted to eventually do another episode and include more careers. So here we are. We are going, again, to discuss three careers that relate to sustainability and helping either the environment, nature, or any other related areas. Our first career is an air quality engineer. An air quality engineer works to ensure that air quality is maintained. Their responsibilities may include performing tests on the air to identify dangerous amounts of toxins or hazardous materials. When air quality is poor, they may recommend or employ strategies to improve it. Air quality engineers may also concentrate on producing equipment that is designed to reduce air pollution. In order to do their job effectively, air quality engineers must know the applicable government regulations that need to be followed and the expected air quality standards for the environment they're testing. Some engineers work for the government and are responsible for such tasks as testing emissions and determining if an organization is in compliance with regulations. Other engineers work for companies that help ensure a business's products or procedures that comply with regulation guidelines. They may also be involved in selling these services to customers. Working conditions differ depending on the employer, the specialization of the position, and the location of the job. An air quality engineer may be required to perform field work, such as observing emission sources, but more often works in an office putting in 40 hours a week determining the factors responsible for airborne pollutants and devising ways to prevent them. Employers expect air quality engineers to have a bachelor's degree. It's common for individuals interested in this career option to study environmental engineering. Practical experience can help graduates entering this field acquire jobs, so students considering a career as an air quality engineer may want to complete internships or cooperative programs. Engineers who wish to advance to leadership roles may want to earn a master's degree and obtain their professional engineer license. Being an air quality engineer involves strong communication skills because air quality engineers need to be able to explain the results of their tests to others and may even need to participate in legal action against polluters if they work for the government. They also need analytical skills to be able to review test data. Problem-solving skills may be needed to identify the source of pollution. Air quality engineers who work in product design also need problem-solving skills to be able to find ways for equipment to officially operate without producing excessive pollution. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates that from 2020 to 2030, an 8% job growth is expected for environmental engineers, which includes air quality engineers. As of 2021, it was reported that air quality engineers earned a median salary of $76,000 per year. Air pollution problems like greenhouse gas buildup and ozone pollution will not be disappearing in the near future and will be increasingly vital areas of research. Our second career is an energy manager. Energy managers perform audits to evaluate energy use, costs, or efficiency initiatives. 
They monitor and analyze energy consumption and sometimes water consumption as well. They design energy efficiency projects and manage their implementation to ensure they meet deadlines, budgets, specifications, and legal requirements. This usually involves conducting a life cycle analysis and inspecting job sites. Energy managers plan and renew energy initiatives for new construction, renovations, and retrofits that maximize energy conservation. They review plans for future projects to determine the feasibility and energy requirements. Some energy managers are responsible for supporting LEED, certification of green buildings or reporting greenhouse gas data to support voluntary climate commitments. Some also deal with utility procurement, ensuring that the company or client is getting the best value. Energy managers must write reports, work plans, and evaluation plans and submit them to management. Some are also tasked with identifying appropriate funding sources for projects and submitting the required documentation to funding agencies. Energy managers are tremendously important professionals who help slow climate change, conserve energy resources, and maintain energy independence by making our industries and offices more efficient and less wasteful. Many engineer managers are employed by manufacturing companies. Due to their commitment to the future of their students, colleges and universities also frequently employ energy managers. These workers improve the energy efficiency of campus utilities, lighting, dining, and residence halls, laboratories, and classrooms. Many energy managers also work for federal and state government agencies. For example, they may work to conserve energy at military bases or government offices. Energy managers spend much of their time working in offices where they create and review plans and write reports. However, they also work at job sites where they oversee project implementation and monitor energy use. The education requirements for energy managers is broad. Many positions require a bachelor's degree in engineering from an ABET accredited program. However, Many also accept candidates with relevant degrees in architecture, mathematics, or physical science. Some even have business backgrounds as facility managers. Most positions require a Certified Energy Manager CEM credential. The education requirements for CEM certification are flexible and take into account the range of educational degrees and years of experience candidates might have. Candidates must have a combination of education and experience, attend a CEM training seminar, pass an exam, and pay a fee. Certified professionals must participate in continuing education to renew their certification. Aspiring energy managers with engineering degrees should be aware that engineers who offer their services directly to the public must be licensed as professional engineers. Getting a license for this typically requires a degree from an ABET accredited engineering program, a passing score on the fundamentals of engineering exam, relevant work experience typically of at least four years, and a passing score on the professional engineering exam. College graduates may take the fundamentals of engineering exam immediately. Engineers who pass this exam are called engineers in training or engineer interns. After gaining four years of work experience, EITs and EIs can go on to take the principles and practice of engineering exam to qualify for a license. Several states require engineers to participate in professional development activities in order to keep their licenses. Most states recognize licenses from other states as long as the state's requirements meet or exceed their own license requirements. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that energy managers who fall under the broader BLS category of environmental scientists and specialists earned a median salary of $73,000 as of May 2020. The job demand for energy managers and other environmental scientists and specialists is projected to increase by 8% between 2020 and 2023. Our third and final career for this episode is a landscape architect. Landscape architects design attractive and functional public parks, gardens, playgrounds, residential areas, college campuses, and public spaces. They also plan the locations of buildings, roads, walkways, flowers, shrubs, and trees within these environments. 
landscape architects design these areas so that they are not only easy to use, but also harmonious with the natural environment. The goals of landscape architects are to enhance the natural beauty of a space and foster environmental benefits. Landscape architects may plan the restoration of natural places that were changed by humans or nature, such as wetlands, streams, and mined areas. They may also design green roofs, roofs that are covered in soil and plants, or rooftop gardens that can retain stormwater, absorb air pollution, and cool buildings while also providing pleasant scenery. Landscape architects spend much of their time in offices where they create plans and designs, prepare models and preliminary cost estimates, and meet with clients and workers involved in designing or planning a project. They spend the rest of their time at job sites. Landscape architects typically need a bachelor's or master's degree in landscape architecture or a related field, such as architecture. There are two undergraduate landscape architect degrees, a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture and a Bachelor of Science in Landscape Architecture. These programs usually require about four to five years of study. Accredited programs are approved by the Landscape Architectural Accreditation Board. Prospective landscape architects whose undergraduate degree is in another field may enroll in a Master of Landscape Architecture graduate degree program, which typically takes three years of full-time study. Courses typically include landscape design and construction, landscape ecology, and site design. Other relevant coursework may include history of landscape architecture, plant and soil science, and professional practice. All states require landscape architects to be licensed. Candidates for a license must pass the Landscape Architect Registration Examination, which is sponsored by the Council of Landscape Architectural Registration Boards. Candidates who are interested in taking the exam usually need a degree from an accredited school and experience working under the supervision of a licensed landscape architect, although standards vary by state. For candidates without a degree in landscape architecture, many states offer alternative paths, which usually require more work experience to qualify to take the LARE. In addition to the LARE, some states have their own registration exam to test for competency on state-specific issues, such as earthquakes in California or hurricanes in Florida. State-specific exams may focus on laws, environmental regulations, plants, soils, climate, and other characteristics unique to the state. The median annual wage for landscape architects was almost 68000 in May of 2021. Employment of landscape architects is projected to show little or no change from 2021 to 2031. Despite limited employment growth, about 1,500 openings for landscape architects are projected each year on average over the decade. Most of these openings are expected to result from the need to replace workers who transfer to different occupations or exit the labor force, such as to retire. Improving technologies are expected to increase landscape architects' productivity, which should reduce overall demand for the occupation over the decade. However, there will continue to be some need for these workers to plan and develop landscapes for commercial, industrial, and residential projects. Environmental concerns and efforts to conserve water and prevent waterway pollution also may create some demand for landscape architects. So those were the three careers that we are going to discuss for today. I have a list of some other careers that I want to go over in the next part, and I'll make more. But if there are any careers that you want to learn about and you want me to research and talk about on the show, then please message me on the show's Instagram at Color Me Green Podcast or leave a comment on this episode and just like let me know what you want to hear. I want to thank you for listening to today's episode of Color Me Green. New episodes come out on Wednesdays, and hopefully each one has something you can take away and learn from. I currently have a ton of episodes planned, but if you want to request a certain topic to discuss, please feel free to message me on the show's Instagram at Color Me Green Podcast, linked in the show notes. If you love today's episode, please make sure to leave a review and let others know what you think of the show. One of the best ways to help change the world is to share this episode with a friend and let them also learn what they can do to live more sustainably. And as always, remember to reduce, reuse, recycle, and live green.